Hi everybody, uh, well, uh, welcome to this talk uh, about uh, work adventure. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is introduce you to the work adventure platform, explain you how it works, and um, explain you how to design maps, but also how you can install it uh, locally. So, uh, yes, first part, I'm going to talk about work adventure. If you don't know work adventure yet, what it is. Uh, I'll explain how it's an open platform. And uh, yes, build your map, script your maps, self-hosting. Let's get started. A, a quick uh, word about myself. My name is David. Uh, I'm the CTO and uh, co-founder of Work Adventure. Work Adventure has been uh, created uh, during the COVID crisis. Basically, uh, I was at home locked and I wanted to see my colleagues and I was sad. Uh, and I was looking at a way to uh, uh, to see them and have a chat with them, and this is how the idea uh, came up. So, what is it exactly? Well, it's a platform to build virtual universes. Uh, what we are trying to achieve is uh, to reproduce a sense of belonging in the same place. You know, uh, right now, you see me through a, a live stream. Uh, I'm not seeing you. I don't know how many you are. <laughs> uh, and um, it feels a bit weird. Uh, what I'm trying to do uh, with Work Adventure is uh, to have a sense of physical presence, even if we're remote. Uh, and yeah, this is, we try to bring people together and to increase spontaneous interactions. This is really important. Uh, basically, um, uh, we want interactions to be as spontaneous. When I present work adventure, often people will tell me, oh, uh, are you trying like to do in the Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse like this? And, 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 and the answer is clearly, clearly no. Uh, work adventure looks like that. It's definitely low tech. It looks like an old video game. It's 2D. We have no plans to make it 3D anytime soon. Uh, because because it, 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 having it being 2D helps us in a number of ways. Uh, it works on low end laptops, uh, on phones. It's very energy efficient. And uh, the, the best of all, uh, when you look at the screen, you know who's around. There is nobody that can be hidden in your back. <laughs> uh, also, we want it to be, you know, spontaneous. And um, if you have to put a helmet uh, or glasses uh, to be able to speak with others, the time you put the helmet, uh, well, it's definitely not spontaneous. With Work Adventure, the thing you can do is basically leave it in the background, just like you would do with a normal chat application. And when someone comes and talks to you, you'll hear ding dong, and you can talk with the people. Uh, so what are we using it for? Uh, plenty of different use cases. Uh, it's been widely used for recruitment. If you are in a company and want to do some recruitment, there is a wow effect to do it, it online. Uh, onboarding, training, digital workspaces, basically virtual offices and a bunch of events, small events, meetups, large events. Uh, it's been also used for uh, marketing. If you want to showcase a product, I know it's been using to sell shampoo, for instance, <laughs> and, and, and a lot of fun. Uh, I, I'll talk about that a bit later. But uh, yes, some people have been creating games on this platform. So demo time. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. And what I'm going to do, basically, I and actually, you can follow along if you want. I'll go on the Work Adventure website. I'll click on Try It. And I'll be automatically connected to my Work Adventure map. So do it also. Don't hesitate if you want. WorkAdventure.re, and you can come along. And so what happens here? Oh, well, I'm already collect, connected on, in another browser tab. But yeah, if I'm going here, I'm putting a bubble. Hey, Greg, how are you? Oh, OK. 
<laughs> cool. Uh, I, I, I leave you. You seem to be in a car. Uh, so you get the idea. Oh, and you see the other Greg. It's coming here. Hey, Greg. Hello. <laughs> and, and, and you see we have a bubble here. And when people are in the bubble, we can chat with each other. If I am leaving, thanks. The video stops automatically. OK? Uh, so it's pretty easy, and the map is actually quite. This map is actually quite big. You can move if you want to have bigger meetings. You can go here and start a Jitsi meeting. So this is Jitsi embedded inside Work Adventure. For those of you who don't know Jitsi, it's an open source conferencing sol solution, just like Google Meets, uh, and, and it's great. Uh, and you can even uh, wait. Oh. Let me go here, do stuff like having large conference rooms. Here, I could give a conference and have hundreds of people listening to me. All right. So this is basically what a work adventure looks like. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and it's a lot of fun, definitely. <laughs> uh, so, one important thing uh, I want to tell you, it's an open platform. So the license is AGPL v3 modified by the commons clause. So it's almost open source. Like you can do, uh, you can modify the code, you can uh, install it on whatever servers you want. The only thing we ask you not to do is uh, not to sell subscriptions to Work Adventure. Uh, so this is the only limitation that makes it not completely open source, because this is what we basically do. So, um, and if you want to start with Work Adventure, you can self-host it. Uh, you can install Work Adventure on your own server and do whatever you want with it. Or you can use our hosted uh, install, and we provide hosting for uh, uh, one-time events for uh, digital uh, places. And also, interesting, there is a free tier account. So if you want to get started, the easiest solution is to create a free account. And when you are convinced that uh, you want to go further, you can decide if you want to self-host it or uh, if you want to pay a subscription. So we host it for you. All right. So. Uh, one thing that's been really important for us is that we try to design work adventure to be extensible. Uh, and we try to keep that in mind uh, at every stage of the design of work adventure. Uh, and the first thing is that you can build your own map. And there is no restriction. Like uh, you don't have to use a given tile set. Uh, you don't have to, uh, you are not restricted on the graphics. You can really do whatever you want. Um, so let me explain you how it works. Well, first of all, I, I, I'll go back on the map here, and I just need to show you something. We can edit the map directly into Work Adventure with an, a little edit button here. So if I want to put a plant here, I can. And maybe I want to put some furniture here. I can do that also. And um, maybe this furniture, when we get next to it, we can open a website. So I can, well, I'll open the Work Adventure website. And if I do this, and um, when I go next to, the, to this icon, open the website, and the website is actually opening inside Work Adventure, so you can embed any website here that can be embedded as a website. Oh, I, I, I see we have some visit. Uh, all right, so um, so basically you can build your own map uh, and you can Customize your own map. But if you want to build it from the ground, you cannot do that directly through Work Adventure yet. Uh, what you have to do instead 
is to build the base of the map. So the floor, the walls, uh, basically the terrain, this structure, you should create it in outside of Work Adventure in a tool named Tiled. And then when you are in Work Adventure, you can customize and add a layer on top, uh, which will contain the furniture and uh, the interactions and uh, all this. So basically in Work Adventure, we have the IKEA mode and in Tiled, it's more like uh, big um, floors and stuff like that, you, you build your house. So what is Tiled? Well, Tiled is an external map editor. It's open source also. You can download it and let me show you how it works. I'm going to start Tiled here. Oopsie. Well, anyway. And so here is a map designed in Tiled. It works really like Photoshop, you know, but instead of pixels, you are, you have sprites. So here we have a bunch of layers. And if I want, I don't know, if I want to put this car, for instance, on the floor layer, I could put the car here and, um, and, and, and basically that's it. Here I can import whatever tile set I want. Uh, tiles should be provided as PNG files, 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And uh, when I'm done, I can save the file locally and it's going to give me a TMG file, which is basically a file in the JSON format, but you don't really need to bother to know about that. And there will be a number of images next to it. So, what are you going to do with this map? Well, you would normally think, okay, now I'm going to upload them on the Work Adventure server. But the thing is, in Work Adventure, it doesn't work this way. Uh, you host, you are responsible for hosting your map on a web server, whatever it is. Uh, so it can be uh, Apache, Nginx, whatever uh, web server you have. And Work Adventure will come and load the map from this web server. If you don't have a web server, the good news is that uh, GitHub pages, GitHub provides uh, basically um, uh, a web server for free as GitHub pages. So you can push your map in Git and it will be deployed. Uh, if you don't like GitHub and you prefer GitLab because it's open source, there is GitLab pages and it also works. Okay, so what happens? The flow is this. You design the map in tile. You push the map on a web server or you push the map on GitHub and GitHub deploys the map on a web server. And then inside your browser, when you load Work Adventure, Work Adventure will load the map here and customizations, so the IKEA mode, will be loaded from the map editor module of Work Adventure, which is stored on the Work Adventure server. So, you store most of the map, except the customizations that are stored by Work Adventure itself. So it's a bit of a hybrid mode. Um, and as we advance, we will make the customization here more and more powerful. Uh, but we will always keep this because it's pretty cool to be able to have maps that can be hosted anywhere on the web and not on our server, which means that you are in charge of the map but uh, also you have the freedom to do whatever you want. Okay, so uh, if you want to get started, a starter kit is avail available here. Uh, and you can simply clone it, modify whatever you want. The TMG file is here, and then you do a fork, you push it, you deploy it on GitHub pages, you have your map. All right, let me go back to this here, sorry. Okay, oh, oh, another important thing is uh, that oh, here we have a look at the map in tile. From a map, you can jump to another map. Okay, maps are linked together and the way we do that, you can do it from the map editor. If you want to do it from tile here, 
you would design a special layer. Uh, so this layer is uh, actually containing only one tile here and one, so Woka, the Woka is the name of the little character, works here. We execute the custom pro property, which is here, which basically says, uh, lead me to the map whose name is floor1.json. Okay. And basically, this looks very much like an hyperlink in an HTML page. The fun thing is that you can do the opposite when you arrive on a map. Maybe if you go, if you come from the first floor, you want your worker to appear basically here. Uh, so this could be another layer, which is named down the stairs. I'm flagged, flagging it as a possible start layer. And this looks very much like an anchor in HTML. And actually, it works like this. You see the name of the layer is down the stairs. And in the URL of Work Adventure, if I put hashtag down the stairs, I will start at this position. So Work Adventure works somehow like a web browser. Instead of an HTML web page, we have JSON files that represent the maps. Instead of hypertext links, we have exit URLs. And instead of anchors, we have entry layers. But it, 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 it works a bit the same. Now, if you think about it, on the web, we can do something additionally, which is write some JavaScript. When you do some web development, you can put JavaScript in the web page. And the JavaScript page will be able to modify the web page uh, directly and provide some interactive feature. In Work Adventure, we have what we call the scripting API. Since Work Adventure runs inside the browser, uh, the scripting API is also working in JavaScript. So how does it work? And what can we do with it? Well. In your map, when you design a map, you can provide scripts. And those scripts can be used to alter the map. Like you can open or close door, you can build escape games. And in order to do that, uh, I, I'll show you again. Wait. In the starter kit here, we have an src direct directory. And here we have a main.ts file. And here we can put some TypeScript or JavaScript, if you prefer, whatever. But the code you put here will be able to interact with the map directly. How does it work? Let me go back to the presentation. Sorry. Oopsie. There we go. So scripts are coded in JavaScript. They are executed locally, so on uh, in the browser. And we are executing those in an iframe. So why are we doing this? Well, for security reasons. Anyone could try to load a map on your work adventure server, and you maybe did not load the map yourself. Uh, so we don't want any JavaScript to be able to access work adventure itself, to be access to to be able to access your cookies, uh, steal your credentials, stuff like that. So the way it works is that when you are in the browser and when you are on a map, there is a tiny one pixel by one pixel iframe that is hidden on the map. And it contains the code of your map. And the iframe will communicate with work adventure through what we call the post message API. The post message API is basically um, an API uh, that is used to communicate between iframes and it's based, it, it exists in all browsers. So let me give you a small example. And it, it's really four lines of code. Here we have a global WA object. So this object is part of the scripting API. And um, here I'm saying when my woka is entering a layer whose name is clock. So basically the layer name clock is here. Then execute this code. And this code is basically 
computing a string that contains the time. And it's opening a pop-up named clock pop-up saying it's and here is the time. So here I managed to develop a very small script that, I, that is making a small interactions, but you can really do much, much, much more. Uh, basically, from the scripting API, you can read the content of a map, you can show high layers, edit layers, load additional tile sets, and there are plenty of options. Uh, it's pretty powerful. Right now, uh, we have people that have been using the scripting API to develop um, a Pac-Man clone. Uh, others uh, have been uh, using it to develop um, escape games. Right now, I'm trying to use it to develop um, uh, bots uh, that are using uh, uh, large language models to uh, talk to users. So really, if you are a developer, uh, don't hesitate to have a look. Uh, it's fine. Um, also, if you want to get started, we have some tutorial available. Uh, so at docs.workadventure.re, we have uh, basically uh, uh, the docs and the tutorials are here. The, they have been written by uh, Kate from FNOX Collective. Uh, and and I, I would really like to, to, to thank her for that. Uh, so they've been contributed by the, the, the community and, and, and they are quite nice. So you can learn how to have a day and night effect, how to take notes. Um, yes, uh, and in this documentation, if you want to know also how to build maps and do some advanced stuff, you can go in map building and here in build your map with style, we, you have a number of tutorials available on YouTube that are going to detail how to do this. All right, so now that I've been talking about how to build a map, let's have a look at how you can install Work Adventure yourself. Uh, this is a topic I've not been covering very often. I think it's really the first time I'm really making a talk about it. Uh, but I know that uh, at TuxTagger there are a few system administrators, so I thought you might be interested by this topic. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So if you want to host work adventure yourself, uh, you need to understand basically the basic architecture of it. So here you have your browser and we already know that the maps are loaded from a web server that is not in work adventure. So you need a web server to host your maps. Then if you want to host a uh, work adventure, here is the structure of work adventure itself. Uh, it's uh, basically the, what, we, what I call the work adventure cluster here, but it can actually be hosted on a single server. It's used to share the position of the workers in real time between the players. And it's also used to transmit chat messages. I did not show you, but you have an integrated chat in it. Uh, what the Work Adventure server is not doing is relaying video. The video streams, I'll talk about those later. But please keep in mind that the role of the Work Adventure server here is more uh, to have the real-time view of the workers that are working around your map. So, all those elements are provided as a Docker container. Uh, and if you want to install it, uh, we provide a production ready Docker Compose file that you can use to deploy it on a machine. I know that uh, some members of the community have uh, provided um, uh, Kubernetes maps, uh, Kubernetes charts, sorry. Uh, the core team of Work Adventure is providing this Docker Compose file, which should really uh, be enough for most of the use cases. So, what do we have in the cluster? First, we have a reverse proxy. We use traffic, so it's a reverse proxy. It's used to send uh, the request from your browser to the correct uh, component, basically. It also acts as an HTTPS termination endpoint, 
which means it's responsible for getting the certificates, renewing them from let some script and <coughs> sorry uh, and that's it. If you want, uh, so it also means that the install you do of Work Adventure should be um, uh, should be on a server that has a direct access to the web with an IP address that is published on the web. All right. Then we have pusher containers. So the role of the pusher is to dispatch the position of a player to all the other players in the same map. Um, you can have many pushers. And basically, it means that if you want to scale and if you have very large rooms, you can install several pushers and uh, they can work together. Uh, basically, a pusher can contain about 200, between 200 and 300 concurrent users. If you plan for more, which is a big, big room, you should uh, add several pushers. Then there is a back container. The back component is used uh, as a single source of truth. It's storing the position of all the users, but it's not talking directly to the users. The pusher are responsible for that, for this scaling mechanism. Then we have the map editor with a storage that can be on a disk or in the S3 compatible um, system. And uh, this is storing basically the customizations you do from your map. Finally, we have the chat system with a front and a back. Uh, right now, it's done in Ijaverdi, so it's using the XMPP protocol. So it's an open protocol for chat. And we are planning to modify that in the future and to migrate the chat system to my matrix. Uh, it's not done yet. Uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, it's part of our plans. All right. So if you want to start a production environment, well, uh, you should basically uh, uh, use the Docker Compose file. Uh, let me show you. For this, you go to the GitHub of Work Adventure. There is a contrib directory. Here, there is a Docker directory. And here, you have all the documentation you need. Uh, we explain in details what you can configure. But if we want to keep that really easy, basically, it's as easy as taking the end file uh, copying the on file and customizing the environment variables. Here you will need to put the domain name of Work Adventure in particular, and then firing up Docker Compose, and everything will start. And uh, if everything goes according to plan, your Work Adventure install uh, should be ready. All right. So we have a working Work Adventure setup, but there is something that is missing. Who is going to dispatch the video streams? Well, uh, the good news is that we are using what we call WebRTC in the bubbles. And so uh, when you go next to someone and we start a video stream, what the browser is trying to do, it's trying to stream directly in peer-to-peer -peer with other browsers. And this is a feature that is built in all the browsers. The protocol is called WebRTC. So basically, the work adventure cluster will only help the browser to find each other, and then the communication will be established directly. It sounds a bit crazy when you think about it. And it is a bit crazy, but it works. It's a bit more complicated than this schema, actually, because how do the browser, how can the browsers talk to each other? Well, in a real scenario, actually the browser, when you are at home, you are behind a router, right? The router from your uh, ISP. And so the question, and, and you have a private IP address, but your router has a public IP address. So the real question is, how can we find the IP address of the routers? Well, how does it work? The thing is, you, uh, 
where the WebRTC protocol is using a protocol named STAN. So you need a STAN server, and the browser is going to make a UDP call to the STAN server, and the STAN server, and basically by doing this, it's going to open a few ports so the STAN server can answer, and the STAN server will answer, and in part of the answer, he will give the IP address he's seeing. So if this is the IP address of the router, the router will answer, hey, to the browser, hey, you are, and he will give the browser his public IP address. He will also give him the port open by the router, and the funny thing is, and it's a bit crazy, but it's working this way. This port will be open for uh, a few minutes, and you can actually send messages on this port, and it will be tra transferred to the browser. But the messages do not have to come from the people you're talking to. They can come from anywhere on the web. So now that we know our browser, the browser is going through the web socket connected to the server to send the IP address to our to the other browser. And the other browser will say, OK, who am I? So it will contact the stand server. The stand server is going to answer. And then the browser is going to answer, oh, by the way, my IP address is this, and you contact you can contact me on this UDP port. And then communication is established directly, and the video streams are going through. And this is really actually super cool. The thing you need to understand is that for work adventure to work, you need to have a stand server. And um, okay. If you have a stand server, you're happy. First result, it's working. Cool. And suddenly, after a few days, you will realize that the video stream is failing for about 15% of your users. Why? Well, it's not really difficult to imagine. Imagine your user is, is in a bank. The network of the bank is really tightly uh, configured. You have firewalls all over the place and UDP is not allowed. So how can we do? Well, if you are on a network that is constrained, you should use what we call a turn server. So turn is yet another protocol. <laughs> Sorry about all those details, but uh, it's so that you can understand what's going on. And uh, the turn server acts as a relay server for the video stream. So you can talk to a turn server in TCP. It's, masquerade, it's masquerading as a classic HTTP server. And the thing is the turn server can talk to the other users in UDP or in TCP. So it acts as a relay. And if the video stream cannot be established directly, the video stream will go through the relay. So you need also a turn server. OK, the good news, we have an open source implementation of this, which is called Cotern. And Cotern does both the stand server and the turn server. Uh, so you need to go on Cotern and install one of those. Take the credentials and put them in the environment file of WorkAdventure. Um, also, one HD video stream is about one megabit per second. So depending on the number of people you are expecting and on the number of people who need to go through the turn server, you will have to scale the turn server accordingly. You can add several turn server. Uh, that's not a big problem. So our video streams are now dispatched. But there is still an issue. Imagine we are in a bubble with three people. Each browser will send the video to the other two. Now someone enters the bubble. We are four. Now each user is sending the video three times. And if we are five, OK, you get the idea. The more people are talking to each other, and the craziest it gets, but the amount of uh, bandwidth necessary will increase a lot. So imagine you are on a classic web connection and upload is limited, and especially if you have an old connection in ADSL. Uh, you'll have a problem. Also, 
if you need to send the stream four times, it will actually be encoded four times because of UDP, you never know what each browser will expect. And so it's going to take a heavy load on your CPU. So the thing is that after a conversation at four users, it's starting to fail on low-end laptops, and after six, it's failing everywhere. So what we do to avoid that, we use a server called an SFU server. So the rule of the SFU server is to take the upload and dispatch the upload to all other browsers. Or maybe you can stream once and send the video to 100 people. It, also, it can also do stuff like that. Um, so in order to have work adventure working, you need the work adventure cluster, but you also need stand and turn plus the SFU server. In our case, in work adventure, the SFU server we are using is GT. So this means that you will have to install GT next to your work adventure server. Uh, people have been trying to install everything on one server, but usually because Cotern and GT have special needs for ports, what I usually recommend is to use at least three servers, one for work adventure, one for Cotern, and one for GT. Uh, and if you want to scale this, it's also possible. GT does scale. Uh, it's getting really, really, really tricky if you want to autoscale. Uh, also, GT is particularly resource intensive. Of course, it is taking a lot of bandwidth uh, because it's going to relay all the video streams, but it's also taking a lot of CPU. So you need to have a really big machine. Typically, uh, the work adventure cluster can run on a low end machine like two or four CPU a few gigabytes bytes of RAM, everything's going to be this well. GT, however, is doing the heavy work and will require appropriate hosting. All right. And when we do this, well, you can have big conferences in work adventure with, with a lot of people uh, talking to each other. The position here is shared by the cluster, uh, the work adventure server, GC, GT is taking care of the video. And uh, yeah, it can be a great experience. So uh, what I want you to uh, remember, so WebRTC can be trickier. Work, work adventure itself is not that difficult to host. However, when it comes to video, it's still a bit difficult. So don't expect to install a complete cluster um, in a few, in one hour. It, it's going to take a bit more configuration. All right. So um, that's it for uh, my presentation. Uh, I just wanted to tell you guys, uh, the German open source community is crazy. Uh, Work Adventure would not be where it is today without uh, you, uh, the open source community at large and the German one in particular. Uh, I would like to thank a lot uh, all the guys at the Chaos Computer Club uh, and also FNORTS Collective, who's been uh, helping us, uh, giving us feedback, working on the documentation, uh, providing uh, pull requests, uh, and the open source community at large. Really, um, in the future, what we are going to do is we're going to try to keep work adventure um, as extensible as possible. Uh, I want to make it the ultimate sandbox so you can do whatever you want in it. You, you know, during the lockdown, people were uh, 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 did the church in work adventure. I, I want to see what you guys. Uh, can build with that. And uh, we are very much looking for contributions, con sorry, contribution, contributions. So uh, uh, feel free to come. Um, I've shown you my uh, office. Uh, you, if, when you click on try it, you are actually arriving in my virtual office. So if you want to come and talk to me anytime, feel free. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it.
Um, so if there are any questions, uh, don't hesitate. All right. Actually, all questions have been asked, uh, answered by Kate, oh! <laughs> which, which was very nice of her. Uh, I already already thanked her in the chat. Uh, Kate is super efficient. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much, Kate. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, well, uh, if Kate already did all the job, uh, <laughs> thanks again. Uh, uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, yeah have a great day <laughs>